Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to a Premier League presentation. Going to be bringing you guys this game here between Mouse Sports and Virtus Pro. These two teams going into the second game of this best of three series to decide who is going to be taking the maximum point value for this tournament cup and uh, proceeding on with the higher value in the seating for what is to come, which is going to be the Premier Cup on Saturday and Sunday. And yeah, Mouse Sports wins this. They will be placing, I believe, at second place and then uh, Virtus Pro will be looking at fourth place. Otherwise, we're looking at uh, Virtus Pro moving up to third. And uh, no, I I'm getting that wrong somehow. Evil Genius says their point value is skewed there, but uh, I'm not exactly recalling. Do you have a recollection of how that plays if on out? Virtus Pro win, they move into second place at 250 points. Actually, no. Yeah, second place, 250 points. Mouse Sports go from 180 to 30, which leaves e uh, EG on 220 in fourth spot. If Virtus Pro lose this best of three series, the Mouse Sports will move up into second place, EG in third, and then we're going to have um, Virtus Pro playing off against Alliance in fourth spot. And, yeah, that's pretty much how it's going to work out, but standard bans for Mouse Sports yet again. We've got the Wiz taken out ASAP. Batrider being banned out, though, by Virtus Pro instead, so it looks like Mouse Sports to switch it up and remove the Life Stealer. And Virtus Pro, on the other hand, looks like we'll be seeing an Obsidian Destroyer Chen versus a Nature's Prophet plus whatever else they secure right now on Mouse Sports' side. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so starting things off, of course, they want to take out the, the Wisp and the Batrider are very, very common bans. More interestingly, the Lone Druid and the Life Stealer. Used to see the ban band pool a lot, but have since received a few nerfs here and there that have made them viable picks, but not so common in the first banning stage. So interesting to see them there. But switching things up, opening the pool a little bit more, we are going to see some top tier play. First, we're going to see the Beastmaster Nature's Profit combo, which again could go in synergy with that Tinker and a lot of mobility there. Either way, there's a lot of push and there's a lot of hard right click from these guys. The Nature's Call, the Inner Beast, all these things very, very effective in that regard. Either way, along with that, we're seeing them go up against the OD and the Chen, which have a completely different set of potential. Uh, the OD is really, really strong in control in the lane. The Chen is great at bringing down towers and ganking it up a little bit. So if there is some good roaming from Chen and getting like a Dark Troll Warlord or Dark Troll Summoner on the mid lane there, if they could bring on just about anybody, even the Beastmaster could be tanking it up and OD's right clicks are so substantial that if he's in an overextended position and gets punished by Chen, that could be a pretty easy kill. So we'll see if that rotation does come on through. But either way, kind of laying the foundation right now. They know that they... Uh, want NS on that Chen. They know that they want, uh, I believe, I don't, Illidan and TNW have kind of switched it up as far as who plays the OD, so I'm not sure 100% about that one, but either way, these guys love to play that hero in the mid lane and try to give him as much farm as possible. Yeah, I'll stick him down there. Now we have got anti mage banned out yet again, just not allowing Black to get stuck in on that. Tree also banned out by Mouse Sports. I think a safe ban there just because it makes, I mean, you've got, tr that said, with Tree and Chen on the same team, it means you've pretty much got to have somebody running solo safe lane. Mm -hmm. Because Tree has practically no impact on that lane beyond the living armor. So you've got to be so if you go up against like the offensive tri lane with Marana, that sort of business again, she just like it's just way too much firepower being dropped on them. But we'll see I don't know if they would have drafted Tree, but I suppose if you want to play super greedy, Tree does allow that. He does allow you to run through that tri-core or even dual-core setup very efficiently just because it's hard to knock him out. And with Chen and Tree, I don't think you'd see a lot of people die very frequently once we hit level 6 or so for those two supports. However, third pick here for Virtus Pro, I think they... I think Well, they've got their... Got their main sorted out here. They don't have to worry nice. too much about the offlaners getting banned out. I mean, we've already got Bat out, and that's pretty much the only offlaner that's been knocked out besides Lone Druid. Mm -hmm. So... I think they've got plenty of choices here, so yeah, they can afford to just grab up the supports, and in this case, Vengeful Spirit. Yeah, really, it's really good solid. pickup for them. Uh, it works well with the push, and we've seen her actually picked up a lot more this tournament, and this cup specifically, than any other time previously. She just has so much to offer and in the early game stages, and she also benefits uh, her allies a lot with the Wave of Terror, with the Vengeance Aura. These things enhance physical damage so very substantially that towers can be dropped down very, very quickly, and, uh, of course, they can also just deliver the physical damage to their opponents directly. Uh, there's a couple reasons why I really like this pickup. First of all, it's something that Mouse Sports might have been looking for themselves because the Inner Beast plus the Vengeance Aura are both very, very powerful in synergy, and that can make for things like Level 1 Roshan, which ties into Venomancer pretty well, um, but also they have the aspect of 
can a little bit more control over positioning because right now Beastmaster is the longest range initiator on the battlefield but when VS hits her level 11 her level 16 she can match that or even out outlie that so it's going to give more potential for them to pull people out of position to lock people down and that's going to be something that Virtus Pro sorely needs since they have the damage and the healing and they just need to make the fights uh, happen on their terms that works pretty well alongside Weaver who's going to be able to jump in very aggressively wherever he may be so interesting to see the Venomancer here but the rest kind of falls into place pretty well yeah the Venomancer is definitely sort of a bit of an odd pick We'll see where they go with that. I want to mention that between the Vengeful Spirit, the OD, and the Chen, Weaver is going to be so hard to pin down and shut down. I mean, the only thing that make you more aggravating would be something like a tree, but this is definitely going to lend them a lot, a lot of extra, like, of survivability to the Weaver. And this is perfect. If Tamar Wild is playing that, it just, because we see how aggressive he gets with that hero, he goes, he goes absolutely crazy. He says, you know what? That's a tower. I'm going to just dive that all down. I don't care if they've got a roar. I'll dive it anyway and just rely on time lapse to get me out or just a healer or something like that to just basically see him through. And we'll see where, we'll see. I mean, that said, they do have a Rubik. Rubik loves to steal stuff off Weaver. Mm -hmm. Weaver has Shikuchi, very easy to nick. And once Rubik gets out, he's so mobile, he can get stuck in. And because he can spam it all day long, because he's got a pretty decent pull and it's a cheap spell, he can just dance in and out of the fight, mm -hmm. lifting people, zapping people with Fade Bolt, or just generally stealing whatever, whichever spell he needs to replace it with, get that big ult. Although, Virtus Pro right now don't have that huge spell. I mean, unless he can get in close to the chin. Like, really close Chen, because Chen's yeah. going to be chilling at the back of the fight more than likely. He'll be hard to get his hands on, because mm -hmm. generally speaking, Chen tries to hang out of sight around the back so he doesn't get blown up. Yeah. But, and... but still, uh, Paz has shown in previous plays that he loves to steal from the OD over and over, uh, because you're either mm. stealing the Sanities or a generally maxed out Astral Imprisonment. So that's really, really good for the, the, both the aspect of defensive plays, and also just to take somebody out of the fight for four full seconds. So stealing from Weaver and out or the Vower just casually guarantees that him to get a, a really solid spell. It's not going to be a super uh, turnaround Wombo Combo Breaker, but... It is going to be still something that they can use as kind of their bread and butter, as they'll have it so consistently that it'll be to use to great effect. Yeah, I'm mostly interested to see how this Venomance performs because he's definitely not a very popular pick. Was some time ago, mm -hmm. but he's really as like we saw him picked like a long time ago. But I feel that the more the reason he was being picked was because there were fewer heroes in the pool. And as soon as we got stuff like Shadow Demon back in, Ooh. we just Venomance just disappeared entirely. Wow. Okay. Fun. Oh. Um, all right, is this a dual mid? I mean, with if they go, say, Rubik and Pudge together, no. No. Nah. Because sure, all he's got to do is Astral and Prism, and the Pudge can't run him down. That that wouldn't really work Gen at all. Generally speaking, how Mouseports run a Pudge is in a tri lane early into a push lineup. They have the push with Venomancers, Plague Wards, uh, Beastmasters, Axes, and Aura, and Nature Prophets, uh, Treants. But essentially, what I understand them to do is run Black, Safe Lane, Pudge, for just a handful of levels, and then as soon as they get going with the push, he's the one that f uh, forces them to put, commit more and more heroes th to the defense. Because if you try to defend against a push with just one or two heroes, you're going to get hooked. And that's going to set it up where it's just going to be easy pickoff after easy pickoff, and they're going to start steamrolling. But, that being said, there's still some potential for them to put them elsewhere, but I believe it's going to be fought on the mid, Nature Prophet, down on bottom, Koikova, and then everybody else is going to head up top lane. I am, honestly, I have never seen Black run a Pudge before, but this should be this should be a cracker of a match. Now, OD though, going to go with a five-man sweep here with the rest of Virtus Pro, going to sweep into here, and at the moment they'll have the numbers advantage. We'll come down to whether or not Venomancer or Black get caught out here by this. Are they going to snow? They're not going to smoke, so they're just going to wander in here. I think they're just trying to get wards down potentially. Mm -hmm. Chen is carrying them in here, and I doubt he'll be. I think he'll be playing defensive just from his item build because he's got no regen at all, so he's not really going to want to get caught out, get harassed, or trade hits or anything. So probably see them fade back into their own lane and just leave Clockwork up here to look after this lane himself. Because I get the feeling we'll, we'll have. I get the feeling we'll have. Oh, it's, actually, I mean it's Illidan. They could actually want up safe lane with that and just put Tamer Wild mid, just because Tamer Wild does so well with levels for diving. Yeah. Most definitely. So, I mean, they could mix things up a little bit with the OD. As far as his item buildup, actually, it looks like, yeah, the magic stick, the bring of protection, he doesn't seem to be wanting to actually go head-to-head -head in the mid lane because of that buildup. So, I think he is going to go 
uh, 1v1 versus the Furion, and he should have a pretty good advantage in that lane in general, but it's actually going to be, more interestingly, this matchup here uh, with the supports in the jungle right now. An invisible gyro, uh, Clockwork could be picking off Cinderin very, very easily. Uh, he is looking at pause at the moment, and it looks like they're going to close in on that Magic Missile into Cogs, and that's going to be an easy first blood here. Yeah, the one very great weakness of Rubik is his one base armor, and, of course, his low movement speed, so that allowed KSI to stay right on top of him and bring him down very, very rapidly with really no chance for Ponce to get on out of that situation. So now they go for a bit of dual jungle action while Clockwork resumes the offlane roll. Wow, they're actually, no, they aren't going to go for the offensive jungle at the moment. Look at these wards here. It's really, really smart. If you're doing the offensive jungle, this is a great way to prevent yourself getting jumped. They have the ward here to watch the ramp, make sure they're not going to get jumped from there. Uh, this ward here, it's not going to watch, it's not going to watch any rotations from the base. They're going to have to always be wary of that, but it will watch anybody rotating from the safe lane up here coming to try and shut them down. So I think that's a smart ward to place it, and it did let them light up that Rubik. So it was smart for them indeed. So it worked out quite nicely. Now Cinderin. Not going to be in too much danger here. We've only got the Seder there. He's just going to come in and try and jack the creep wave and just steal some experience there. It does manage to get the kill on the neutral as well. Meanwhile, though, I think Vengeful Spirit is waiting for the courier possibly. In fact, she's going to get it. It doesn't look like it's going to be upgrade. Oh, my God. Uh, if things could go from bad to worst. Did she get in there? Yeah, there we go. That's an easy kill. Oh, wow. That's huge cash value. Faster. Now, we do actually no, see Chen was getting bottle. hit by that a Gale. But yeah, that was his bottle caught on the courier. So, very unfortunately, he's not going to be able to get much sustaining regen up on his Beastmaster, and that's going to let TMW run wild. He picks up uh, a bottle and maybe one rune, and he's going to be in such a better position. Uh, and Smile is just setting him up for that, so really, really nicely done on their part. Um, but that one fortunate thing is that it's not about uh, Beastmaster roaming around and getting ganks at level 6. He's going to put out continuous pressure with the axes, and as long as they have one pair of arcane boots, I think he's still going to feel okay. Right now, just going for the naked rune, though, just picking up the illusion to deny it from that of Weaver. I think more the problem is just the fact that any chance he had of controlling or at least limiting Weaver's early start, it's just gone. It's absolutely gone. Like, Weaver is going to have to throw this away hard if he's going to lose this. And it looks, if Fatter Joe's down there, just picks the rune so Weaver can't have it. Fair enough. Weaver still has that bottle. He's got all that extra regen. And right now, Fatter has to play so defensively. There's nothing he can do. Weaver, in fact, is going to charge forwards. He's going to try and get some damage down. That's how aggressive he feels like he can play just like that. Just charges in there. doesn't give a damn at all. And now Chen and Ventral Spirit. I, mean, I like this effect that they've rotated out of that jungle. That's it. Let's not overplay our hand. Let's not stay in there, try and get too aggressive and get picked off and feed away kills. Let's just transition out. We've, you know, mission accomplished. We've got an early kill on Rubik and slowed him down. We picked off the courier. The Beastmaster's bottle's been massively delayed. We've done our job. Let's go and make sure we get our own farm now. Hmm. Because if they screw that up, gave away a couple of free kills, suddenly supports a mouse in a great position, and then, like you mentioned, Black is just going to start rolling around all over the top of them. Yeah, it's essentially what they have to do. A good thing is they do have the roar against Weaver, so they should be able to lock down TMW in the midst of a fight before the time lap comes out because of that big disable, possibly followed up with this member that can be very advantageous for them. But Because if they pull out the Weaver, there's really not much that VP has available. They have one big cooldown with the OD Sanity's Eclipse, but other than that, it's just some gradual damage output, like the clockwork. Now, one thing that I'm a little bit concerned for, as far uh, from a mouse force perspective, is the fact that the clockwork pick didn't really get taken into consideration with the pudge. They saw the clockwork, they immediately picked up the pudge, as if they had already planned to do it no matter what it was. Actually, a quick smoke gank. Probably going to bring down pause. They go for the magic missile, the wave of terror, and there's the net to finish the job. So nice uh, telekinesis, but not enough to save him here. And Smile picks up a nice little kill and forces Black back actually didn't fall back very quickly and they almost have enough mana for magic missile but just uh, takes a little bit too long to take away but uh, as I was saying the one thing they didn't really seem to take into consideration was KSI selection of the clockwork which is a great hero to go up against Pudge in the sense that he will be able to through battery assault and his hookshot almost completely nullify Pudge's opportunity to go for a full duration dismember it is uh, still gonna be only three seconds on heroes but that's three seconds that you would love to be using that disable on top of what you already have at your disposal. Even even just the cogs is frustrating for splitting up the fight. That I will mention, I think even with Dismember, the Raw, and the Lift, I don't think they can kill Weaver as long as VP are like focusing on keeping him alive. Because they've got Astral Imprisonment, they've got Swap, they've got Chen Heals. I just don't think they can lock him down. It looks like Fatter now getting picked off. Great rotation. This ward. This is actually a pretty high traffic. It's really paid dividends for them. Now they're actually probably going to kill on Smile. As it looks like, oh no, they're actually going to jump in. Going to try and send him home. I don't think he's got the damage to finish. He throws in another stun. That comes for two kills. And Smile gets sent home. Wow. NS. 
And is doing so much work here with the help of Smile. They are really paying dividends for their team right now. And this is just it. Their rotations are really hurting Mouse Sports. And Mouse Sports, their supports are just sort of trying to play catch up here and looking after Black. Yeah, so the flank to gank really, really paying off there. And there was also a solo kill down at bottom. OD had dropped the Nature Prophet's right click damage down to like 32 or something like that. And then he was able to go ahead and just drop a couple right clicks and most importantly that Sandy's Eclipse, which did a huge amount of damage considering the uh, difference that the Astro Imprisonment had given to the, H to the intellect values. But yeah, either way, that on top of the fact that they were able to, using this ward, roam and get two kills out of it and not lose a single hero. Virtus Pro or it's just in a commanding lead in this game. And Mouse Sports definitely they're off to a bit of a bad start. The question, I mean, obviously Pudge is the the big question mark. Here's the wildcard factor. Can they get the hooks in? I mean, Pudge Pudge is one of the heroes. You gotta land those hooks. Land those hooks, suddenly everything can change. Drag so many people out of position. Granted they do have ventral spirits. I mean if you drag a high priority hero out at the very least, you can go for the save fairly effectively. So I don't think they'll get the huge priority heroes, but as long as they keep picking people off one after the other. They can probably get the out of towers at the very least and just catch up on gold, because right now, the gold gain, a solid 3.5k in the Radiance favor, even experience as well has got a big deal. And of course, sitting on 3,000 3, advantage there, and this, I think comes down to the roaming, because we're gonna keep in mind, the roaming that Mouse, that Virtus Pro have been doing, this cuts into their ability to fight, like to get experience. The fact that they're landing this kill after kill after kill with these supports is really helping them. If one of these like early roam attempts backfired and gave away kills, this would be such a different game. But because they keep rolling these kills one after the other, it's giving them such a basically, just, just snowballing basically. Mm -hmm. Pause is going to get picked off here up on top lane. Weaver and uh, Clockwork have just been dancing around the tower constantly actually forcing Black to TP not back to base but back to his tier 2 just to feel safer. They have rocket flared up so that they can get a good perspective there. Meanwhile on bottom lane Virtus Pro putting pressure out there as well with so many creeps with the buckler they're actually going to be able to bring this down very very quickly so the tier 1 tower is going to be forfeit as well as the life of this poor poor Rubik. Now sitting at level 4, Paws, a great Rubik player, but if he can't get that ultimate anytime soon, then he's going to have a real issue com actually contributing to the team fights. There we go, yeah, this is definitely true. Like, I just, I really don't know about this Pudge pick. Like, he's just struggling, struggling to have any impact right now. It's too fat, too slow. Mm -hmm. And like you mentioned, like, hook, like, Clockwork is just such a pest for him to deal with. There's just no real way for him to get a good get a good hook in there. And then on top of it, he finally, like, gets around the Clockwork. They ex wait for the hook to be expired or something like that. Or he manages to wait for the hook to be used on someone else and gets his own hook off. Suddenly, Eventual Spirit just swaps him out. Yeah. It's just, it's just so hard for him to be effective. Space a huge, huge, big, fat dead weight. Oddly enough, they didn't actually get the tier one down to the bottom lane. That still stands yeah. for the moment. I thought that'd go, but as it turns out, they managed to hold on to that. Meanwhile, Illidan though, I think he's he's almost got enough for the mech, so this is going to be a bit of a deal. As Pudge actually pulled its yeah. bottom, might actually be able to here pick up go. a kill here. This is what they're looking for, an opportunity. They go for the telekinesis right down into this member. This should be a very easy kill, so yeah, nicely done. Uh, Rubik's the one to pick up the kill there, but uh, Pudge should still be able to get that flesh heap stack retroactively, so that's going to be nice for them. As they start the momentum, now that they have a Venomancer at level 4, they will be able to start scouting things out with the Plague Wards and uh, trying to actually start spamming them out to bring down the tower pretty quickly, but we'll see if they actually want to commit to the push in full now or wait for a couple more pickoffs before they can get it going. Right now, the Smile, very aggressive position, drops off the Wave of Terror, TMW with a double damage. Very scary indeed. I mean, like, so they might be able to get a little bit of momentum. The thing is, Chen didn't have heal there. Didn't have his ult available, he's only level 5. And the thing was, there were no supports backing. Like, they were not expecting the rotation there. But now they know Pudge is rotating. They're going to put a little bit more emphasis on making sure OD has some backup. And if, like, Vengeful Spirit was there, at best, they would have got a BS. She would have just swapped him out. If, well, assuming she had level oh, 6, nice she's still level 5. But they get the tower. Well wow. played. Wow, wards. Send her in. Plague Ward Micro, too strong. And for those that don't know, piercing versus fortified is the the, ar the attack type to armor type there, and that is very substantially reduced. So the 19 damage, it's more like half of that. It's actually really impressive, even though he had like five wards there, that he was able to get that deny off. You'd figure with a name like piercing, it would go through fortified, but no. nothing in this game makes any damn sense. Not at all. Clockwork though, top late, how's he going? He's currently sitting on 29 or 30 and 3. Could be worse, considering he's been left alone for most of the time. He's just been sort of CSing from a range. He's actually maxed out Rocket Flare. He's doing, gone for that first. Only one level in Cogs. Hasn't really been harassing with Cogs. I mean, fair enough, he can't really use that effectively when there's a Rubik always on top of him. It's just not effective as a defensive skill. So he's just been using distance to keep himself safe and harassing and CSing with his nuke. Meanwhile, though, 
Good you keep in mind, just Weaver just complete free farm here, complete nut of domination in the mid. The question is, what does he go for first? Does he try and rush out that Lincolns to try and stop the, the long range initiations? I would say so. I mean, On there's so many great things to avoid mm. with the Lincoln Sphere. The worst is the Wrath of Nature, but then you also have the Roar, the Dismember, and then anything from Rubik. So, really, I, I think there's no better item to pick up uh, against this kind of lineup. I mean, if he's getting the Lincolns, I think he's just going straight for the ultimate orb, just mm -hmm. for the pure stats, which he definitely could use. He's quite squishy at the moment. Could definitely go with that. I think the question is whether or not Mouse Sports abuse the fact they're on the Roshan side, on the Dire side, just pick up that easy Roshan if they can, although we've got to keep in mind, I mean, they're behind. They Sure, they've got Fury on the tank for them, but they can be scattered at almost any time. Clockwork, Ventral Spirit can quite easily scout, and of course, they get bunched up in their hook shot and Sandy's Eclipse. That is going to really, really hurt. If anything, though, their current advantage, they want to go for an early attempt, just trying to sneak an early one with Nature's Prophet, is the fact they do have the Tier 1 mid still up. And they're going to put their own pressure on now, Mouse Sports. Go to the mid lane, drop down this Tier 1, and if anything, that's really... If this Tier 1 goes, that means they have to run such a long way to try and TP in, like to to get any kind of reinforcements towards the pit from the Radiant side. So I think this is a smart choice to bring this down first before they try and sneak in anything there. If he, Even if they do, Deny comes out, Chen gonna take that one. Unfortunately, Mouse Spots decided they don't want to risk it. Mm -hmm. Down bottom, I only caught the beginning of it, but uh, there was Black going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Illidan, and he starts off with a prison, makes it so that Pudge can't cast anything, and with the Force Staff to pursue, just Arcane Orb after Arcane Orb, and of course, Sandy is doing quite a bit of damage since Pudge is nowhere near his hood. And now we see a Cook on mid, catching out Cinder and inside the cogs. The Gale will only hit on one, and now he should be dropped down, even with the best telekinesis. So there's the Hand of God, there's the Mechanism, keeping everybody up and at him, while Weaver finishes off on that Rubik, who again has just such low armor. He's shredded in just a handful of right clicks. Now, going in, they're going to try to go for the Tier 1. Black can try to pick off somebody with a hook, but there's so many creeps in the way. NS almost baiting a hook, like he is just either blind, I don't even know, but Black not finding his opportunity. Tier 1 is going to drop in favor of Weaver. Team W picking up even more cash. There's a the 4 staff. They're going to try to catch out first Venno, then the Pudge himself. So they get Cinder in, looking for Black here, but they don't have any more lockdown. He will be able to walk on away from there. He's actually going to hope for a hook, I think. He's going to look for a hook there. Illidan's vulnerable. Could go for it, especially since Swap is down as well. Drops the hook, only picks up a troll though for his trouble. In fact, the troll could not, no trolls out of mana. Can't go for that. Nature's Wrath comes through, just gonna see time that's popped by Tame My Wild. A mech also get thrown out there, plenty of heal power. And the fact that we've got a Chen on the team, like the fact that he's more likely to go for the mech, this just frees up Illidan to pick up a four star. I really like the four star on an OD. Yeah. And I think it's become less common because you've obviously lost the damage and attack speed oh. from, but I feel like the mobility is still good. Wow, nice hook there from Black, but there we go. I mean, this is the save aspect for the team. Even without the heals, just an imprisonment being dropped down there and Smile possibly getting away here. Are they going to try and save him? Swaps himself out, pushes 10 forwards, and he should be able to walk away. Damage coming out there. Raw goes out as a last ditch attempt to save Syndrome. It pays off. However, Fata still taking a ton of damage from even one orb coming out of Illidan. Yeah. So, they walk away, Rocket Flare to fly on out, but won't hit on anything whatsoever, and I don't think anything was in uh, Fatality range, uh, even though it is maxed out, Cinder and still just a little bit over that threshold. Either way, uh, good hook to start things off, but doesn't really change what happens. Weaver gets the last hit on the tower, gets a kill on Cinder in, but everybody else just walks away, so... Actually, sorry, that was a while back. OD was the one to pick up the kill on the tower, and nothing else followed suit because of the roar was committed, but... Either way, this is not how Mouseports wanted the game to go. They wanted early momentum, they wanted push potential, but they've just kind of been on the back seat of things and having to turtle up a lot more than they were comfortable with. I really I really would have liked to see... I, I feel like if they wanted to beat OD in the mid, they probably could have run the dual lane there, but... But OD was bot lane, so... What, you mean Weaver? Oh, that's true, yeah, OD was bot lane. And even the Weaver, I mean, you throw a dual lane against him and then have some counter wards in the mid, that would have been so problematic for him to deal with. Possibly, yeah, Sentry wards really definitely hard. change Weaver's laning circumstances. I, I personally, when I play Weaver, love to go 1v2, just because as, unless they have the perfect lockdown team, you still can manage pretty well, and your Shikuchi does, is twice as effective generally. But uh, it really, if they have the sentries, then there is a lot of potential to shut them down. And shutting down TMW is kind of the name of the game when you're going up against such a powerful lineup for VP. Look, he just bought up too. He just grabbed himself a Deso, and my Ow. god, he's going to have some really mean damage now. Deso, you've got the aura there from Ventral Spirit, the negative arm from Deso and Ventral Spirit being tossed out together. That is, I mean, it's only, it's even only a level one wave of terror at the moment as well. This is going to get more and more painful, and of yeah. course the bug swarm as well. Yeah, that's just going to, I mean, that's going to tear heroes like Pudge apart. This is not going to have a chance. Even Ru Rubik, low armor, all these low armor heroes, nobody's going to stand a chance against this. They only have two armor, Rubik and Pudge. It's just. 
not going to look good for them at all. And DD on Weaver, that's just so much. Right click damage to go for the Force. They get the Prison out on the Rubik here, but the Roar goes across. OD going to get a focus down a little bit, but the Hand of God, the Swap, they keep him up and at him, and KSI is splitting up the fight, uh, the fight beautifully with Cogs. Quakeva might be able to get on out of here with a TP scroll, but they have lost this position 100%. The Tier 2 is going to drop. They lost the Beastmaster, and really, VP only committing the Hookshot and the DD. Hand of God. Yeah, I mean, it's 12 to 1. There's no way they come back from this. OD is going to be monstrous. He's already 2.4k. I mean, right there, I mean, they were just screwing around. Smile didn't even need to swap. I feel like he swapped in just to try and get a missile off. He did not need to do that at all. Illidan was in no trouble at all. Hand of God, Mech, all those really good healing tools. And, of course, he can just imprison himself in necessary four star or actually four star forwards. But as it is, Mouse Sports, they lose in quick sets. Virtus Pro too strong. Mouse Sports, of course, we'll see them fairly soon in the finals on the weekend. And, of course, I believe they're going to Valencia mm -hmm. for yeah. the finals. They are not, not our finals, but a DreamHack Summer. 99% sure it's DreamHack Summer they're going to Valencia for, but regardless, I mean, Virtus Pro, they run a very aggressive lineup there, but we've seen some crazy lineups tonight, and Mouse experimenting. I mean, because this game, let's be honest, Mouse Sports are a team, as they've shown, who can drop a line. So, seeding fourth, not a big deal. Or even third, actually, no, Three. this isn't going to change. If, yeah, no, this is fine. I mean, had they come second, they'd be playing against EG. Maybe they feel like Virtus Pro is the better better seed. Yeah, it's possible. Uh, along those lines, going up against uh, Virtus Pro and, and EG between the two different options. Uh, there's a EG, although they have had some questionable games in the past, the, the big thing is unpredictability. And uh, you don't want to go into a first round of a, a big cash prize cup with a huge amount of unpredictability. So as long as you can get something out of it, I think third, second, and first place are all prize worthy. So that's where it comes into play. You just want to try to get as much as you can on out of it. So eh, not saying that they threw the game by any stretch, but it does seem like the drafting was a little bit less serious than it usually is. Picking up the Pudge, trying out the Earthshaker, those were things that uh, we wouldn't normally see in a, a match like this, but they didn't have as much riding on it as some may think mm. if you actually look at how the seating plays on out. So either way, nicely done by Virtus Pro. They show a lot of strength, kind of sticking to their guns, and TMW Weaver is something I expect to see a lot more of because every time it hits the field, there's just, I mean, there's no counter to it. He, everybody's running around with the chicken with their head cut off while he's just ganking, diving, and destroying with runes. And yeah, it's a hero that you don't generally see on mid, but the way he plays it, it works out so darn well. I much prefer seeing Weaver mid than the offlane Weaver against multiple heroes. I feel like he's so much better off for him, and he has a lot more potential with the rune control. And just the fact, because if Weaver gets shut down and crushed early, he gets in such a bad position. Like, he's trying to farm a late Lincolns or a late Dezo. It's just really sad to watch, because he doesn't have a lot of damage output otherwise. But if he gets off to a good rolling start, he snowballs so freaking hard, and he's hard to pin down as well. Really unpredictable, the angles he can come at you from. And he just basically pushes out so much damage with some level advantages. But as it is, I mean, good luck to Virtus Pro and Mouse Sports on the weekend. We'll see what they can crack out, and they will be having a bit of a rematch in round one of the Super Cup coming up on the weekend, the Premier Cup. This is where the money comes in. This is where the teams will be playing off for that sweet uh, cash prize, so we'll see what they can do there. But as it is, Blaze, I, mean, I look forward to the weekend. And unfortunately, bad luck to Mouse Sports. I mean, the other team that was vying for a spot, no, not Mouse Sports, uh, Fnatic. Uh, the other team, of course, who was vying for a spot in the finals is Fnatic, and they were knocked out. Didn't have a great showing tonight. But it will be Virtus Pro, Mouse Sports, EG, and Alliance in the finals on the weekend. Mm -hmm. So should be some amazing games again. That's Saturday and Sunday. Or uh, for you, uh, for those in Australia, is that?